Modern tablets are designed to cover all manner of tasks, from web browsing to streaming videos. You can even use them for work. These devices can come in very handy for budget-conscious students. So today I've come to Leeds University and I've brought along a couple of tablets to find out which offers the best value. Our premium pick is the 10th generation Apple iPad, the UK's most popular tablet. But even this entry-level model will set you back a hefty £499. The iPad's been updated. It now uses Apple's A14 Bionic chip. And it's the first basic iPad to have a liquid retina display, 10.9 inches. For less than half the price, you can buy this budget model from Nokia, the T21, which costs just £199. The Nokia has a 10.36-inch toughened glass display and an aluminium body, which also claims to be tough. Plus, it has a degree of water resistance. Helping me swat up on these new tablets is student Lydia Violetta. Like many of her peers, she works hard and plays hard. So she needs a machine that can keep up without breaking the bank. Lydia, hello, great to see you. Nice to meet you. Now, are you a regular tablet user? I am. I use mine all the time at university. Well, this is the latest uh, version of the iPad. It's the 10th generation. It's now got a, a slightly different style to the older entry-level iPads. It's got rounded corners, rounded edges to the screen, slightly slimmer bezels. I mean, it certainly looks stylish and it feels pretty light. This is definitely something that I could put in my uni bag and take to the library and not feel like I'm lugging around a lot of weight. Just under 500 grams, in fact. Not too heavy compared to a laptop. A good first impression from the premium tablet, then. What will she think of the budget Nokia, which runs Android and weighs 11 grams less than the iPad? So it's a sort of different aspect ratio to the screen. What do you feel about this? It definitely feels different to hold. It's not as sleek as right. the iPad. So, a slightly underwhelming start from the budget Nokia. Next, we want to see how easy the tablets are to use. So, we've loaded up some PDF slides from Lydia's course onto both machines. And we're going to add some notes, just like she does in lectures. This is a great test because my exams are coming up very soon. Ooh, right. We'll start by seeing how responsive they are. First up for us both is the iPad. So when I'm revising, I often highlight the text that I think is right. most important, and this has a feature to do that. Scrolls very quickly. It certainly does. What is the Three Horizons framework? Good question. <laughs> but one I should know. Seems to type quickly, seems to keep up with the rate at which I'm mm. pressing the keys. A nice, snappy experience from the iPad and its A14 chip and the slickness continues when multitasking. Both windows open at once. It's great when you're note-making and you can yes. have the two next to one oh, another. Right. I mean, look, drawing that circle, it, it, you have to press hard, and then it's happening about half a second behind. It definitely takes a lot more time to make things look neat on this tablet. Yes. My flow chart has gone completely to pot. The responsiveness definitely isn't as good. A disappointing showing from the Nokia, then. Meaning, when it comes to using a tablet for work, the easier-to-use and slicker iPad comes out on top. We're going to use our two tablets to follow a classic student recipe from YouTube while comparing screen quality. Today, I'm going to show you how to make this delicious vegetable pasta bake. And we're going to start by par-cooking the pasta. Heat a tablespoon of oil over a medium heat in a large frying pan. Both are looking reasonably realistic. It doesn't look processed or artificial. They're both filmic. Yeah, I agree. To the pan, add a large red onion that's been peeled and chopped into wedges. Starting with the premium iPad, what do you think of the what do you think of the screen? Well, the colours are really popping and it looks really clear. The, the iPad's uh, higher resolution of the two. It... You can definitely see that, I think. Next in goes one roughly chopped red and one roughly chopped yellow bell pepper and a chopped courgette or zucchini. The iPad also boasts a brighter display. Yeah, there's definitely differences yes. in the brightness and, and the, the saturation, yeah. Although I do actually quite like the Nokia's slightly bluer colour balance. Which is interesting because I prefer the colour balance of the iPad. 
The iPad comes with what Apple calls True Tone, which adapts the brightness and tone of the screen to match the ambient lighting, whereas the Nokia screen can only adjust its brightness. Some of these the silver highlights are looking more silvery than they were in that one. Stirring two 400 gram or 14 ounce tins of chopped tomatoes. So, uh, which one do you think wins the screen test, Lydia? For me, I think the iPad. The colours look better. I think the quality looks better. Uh, it's a bit closer for me, because I some of the yes. colours, I think, on, on the Nokia, although they're a bit blue in times, they're more, slightly more realistic, I think. But uh, I'm still going for the iPad overall, though, on, yeah, on, on the I agree. picture round. Close call, but iPad still the winner for me. Mm. But the question is, which is the better value? The premium iPad costing £499 or the budget Nokia at less than half the price? Looks nice. nice. Well, it is certainly, uh, yes, <laughs> vaguely what we're after. Um, well, I mean, interesting days testing. I think the iPad was clearly the best, wasn't it? I mean... That is the one that I would much prefer to use. I found that it was very responsive. The audio was... Fairly similar on the two, I'd say, but the iPad's much more enjoyable to watch. It might be over twice the price of the Nokia, but you have to say, in this instance, it's definitely the best value. Yeah, I definitely agree. That would be something that I would invest in. Right, let's tuck in.